Mesdames et Messieurs, honorables invités, nos hôtes, bonjour à tous. Bienvenue à Montréal, la perle du Canada. J'espère que vous aurez l'occasion d'explorer cette métropole si vibrante et si animée, ainsi que la province de Québec. C'est un honneur et un plaisir de vous accueillir à l'ICAN 66. Nous avons devant nous une semaine importante et passionnante. Grâce à nos efforts combinés, je suis confiant que nous ferons des progrès significatifs sur un éventail de questions qui vont au cœur de nos activités. Here in Montreal, we are gathering as a community for the first time since two of our beloved colleagues, Tarek Kamel and Don Blumenthal, sadly passed away. Joran will pay tribute to Don when he speaks to you shortly, and I will talk about Tarek. Let me first extend the community's heartfelt sympathy to Tarek's wife, Iman, and his son and daughter, Omar and Hiba. Iman and Omar are here with us this morning, sitting in the front row, and we welcome them. They'll be with us on Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. for a special event to celebrate Tarek's life. I invite you all to join us for this event. Tarek died just over a month ago, at the young age of 57. He was my good friend, really one of a kind. He always made time for me, always encouraged me, and always advised me with great sincerity. I can't adequately do justice to how remarkable Tarek was. Perhaps the best way is to recount a very few of the hundreds of eulogies that have been written about him. Many eulogies touch upon his generosity of spirit. Here are some. Tarek had a unique ability to bring people together and forget our differences. I think the reason for that was his big heart. During tough times, he was in some ways like a real doctor, always ready to listen to someone's issues and always ready to suggest a treatment for a problem. I wish we all listen more and try to help, just like Tarek did. Tarek touched the lives of many people with his amazing humbleness and selfless friendship. Perhaps the most poignant eulogies tell us about the private man. Tarek was a quiet giant, much like the pyramids of his birthplace. He showed incredible bravery in fighting against his illness, and even while in the worst of it, he was devoted to ICANN until the very end. And most importantly, Tarek lived for his family. A dedicated husband and father. Who fought so hard for so long to stay with them. We were truly fortunate to have had Tarek as a member of our community for almost two decades. Sadly, he left us too early. A great man, a great loss. Farewell, my good friend, or as they say in the land of the Nile, Al Wada'a Ya Sadiqi Al Aziz. Ladies and gentlemen, may I respectfully ask you to stand for a moment of silence in memory of Tarek and Don.
Thank you. I'm sure you all know this is my final public meeting as I can share. And I'm honored and delighted to speak to you today, albeit for the last time. I will retire at the end of this week and will fly home with many wonderful memories and a great sense of achievement. At the beginning of my tenure as chair, in November 2017, the board and I set our sights on ICANN's future. In particular, we worked with our community and ICANN org on the development of three critical plans to define that future. Since then, at every ICANN meeting, I have reported to you our collective progress on these plans. Hence, before I hand over to my successor, I would like to share with you our latest successes. Firstly, I am pleased to report that the new ICANN strategic plan for fiscal years 2021 to 2025 has been formally adopted by the board. Secondly, the new operating and financial plan for the same fiscal years has been developed and will be published for public comment in December 2019 as agreed. It will show that our strategic plan is realistic and affordable. Lastly, the work plan to improve the effectiveness of ICANN's multi-stakeholder model is also scheduled to be published in December 2019 for public comment. It will list the issues identified by our community and suggested approaches for addressing them over the five-year period of the strategic plan. At this stage, I wish to emphasize, we are not looking for solutions, but rather approaches that will eventually lead to solutions. These three plans are comprehensive and far-reaching, and there are no barriers to their successful implementation. A remarkable achievement by all of us. ICANN's future is therefore in our hands. Mahatma Gandhi once said, the future depends on what we do in the present. So let's take a moment to assess how ICANN is doing at present, three years after the IANA stewardship transition. In particular, is ICANN fulfilling the transition promise? And is it functioning as a mature corporation capable of tackling its external and internal challenges? Starting with the transition promise, there is no doubt that ICANN today is upholding and maintaining the four principles upon which the transition was agreed. We are supporting a multi-stakeholder model and are working on improving it. We are maintaining the security, stability, and resilience of the internet domain name system. We are meeting the needs and expectation of the global customers and partners of the IANA services. And we have adopted a new strategic vision of being a champion of the single open and globally interoperable internet and the trusted steward of its unique identifier because we believe that the internet must belong to everyone and must remain an engine for innovation and continued growth, economic growth. Furthermore, the implementation of the bylaw changes stipulated by the transition has ensured that ICANN remains truly independent and not open to capture. And the nine powers given to our community have enhanced ICANN's accountability, checks, and balances. We also made important changes over the past three years that have strengthened ICANN's capability and its financial sustainability. Most notably, ICANN's technology is more robust and improving 
following investments in infrastructure and new applications. ICANN.org, under Joran's leadership, is more streamlined, better organized, and much more service-oriented. Operating expenses are firmly under control as a result of strong fiscal disciplines applied by management and the board. ICANN funds under management are protected by a sound and strict investment policy, and the reserve fund has increased considerably to 85% of its target, thanks to one-time significant contribution from the auction proceeds and higher-than-planned annual contributions from operational savings. Additionally, the board implemented significant improvements to its operational effectiveness, transparency, and succession planning. And the transfer of responsibilities from myself to Martin Bottoman has happened in a smooth and assured way, just as it did two years ago when I succeeded Steve Crocker. All of these are hallmarks of a mature, privately-led ICANN with the necessary safeguards for its continued success and independence. This level of maturity that ICANN has attained gives us the fortitude to face the uncertainties of the future and the resolve to address our internal challenges. With regard to the uncertainties of the future, we acknowledge that in the next five years, ICANN will face more external challenges than ever before, such as the exponential growth in security threats and the increasing risks of internet fragmentation. But we have developed a bold and decisive strategic plan that responds to these challenges so that we can take ICANN where we want it to be. As for the internal challenges, we acknowledge that to continue to evolve, we must resolve our complex and often conflicting issues, such as prioritizing our work to enable us to make optimal use of ICANN's limited resources, enhancing and streamline the large number of ICANN reviews that are conducted each year, addressing abuse to the domain name system, developing a new governance structure for the DNS root server system, addressing human rights and anti-harassment issues, and evolving a multi-stakeholder model, as mentioned earlier. These tough issues have been put on the back burner for several years. If we continue to leave them unattended, they could tear into the fabric of our community. To resolve them, we need to be open to new ways, ideas, and thoughts. Mistakes will undoubtedly happen, but mistakes are a proof that we are trying. And without trying, progress may never be made. We're all in it together. What makes us strong is that we keep faith in each other and trust our own compass. Another sign of our strengths is that we acknowledge that our public role and public records are quite rightly subject to public scrutiny. We understand the importance of that scrutiny, accept it, and learn from it. The future, therefore, bodes well for ICANN because it has a stable and solid platform from which to carry out its new vision and strategic plan. And when looking to the future, we must never forget that ICANN's legitimacy and its grant of authority come from our global multi-stakeholder community and from the commitment of this community to come together to develop and be bound by consensus policies within ICANN's mission. Our multi-stakeholder model is special. 
I wholeheartedly believe in it as a model of governance, collaboration, and consensus building. A model that empowers our stakeholders from all over the world because it has no borders, no centralized power, and no kill switch. It served us well for the past 20, 21 years and will continue to do so in years to come. Our community is also special. A diverse community comprised of people who are motivated by their commitment to do the public good and by their duty to do what they believe is right for the billions of internet users and future generations. I consider myself a very lucky person to have had the opportunity to be part of this community and serve the global public interest. It is that belief and that opportunity to serve that drove me throughout my time on the board. Working with ICANN allowed me to give something back. It reinforced my belief and my conviction that giving is far more important than taking. In his book entitled The Prophet, the world-renowned Lebanese poet, Gibran Khalil Gibran, wrote, you give but little when you give of your possessions. It is when you give of yourself that you truly give. In that spirit, I hope simply to leave you with a few thoughts to think about as you look to the future. To my colleagues on the board, you are ready for what lies ahead. Remain strategic and forward-thinking continue to build a transparent relationship with our community and be its trusted and reliable partner. And always remember that it is the character we have, the values we uphold, and the ways we support each other that makes us a united and collegial board. To ICANN Org, without you, our strategies and dreams can never become a reality. Your role is to serve the community, support the board, and above all, ensure I can meet all its legal, financial, and fiduciary responsibilities. Continue to do so with integrity, objectivity, and a commitment to quality. And to our community, Progress is not possible without change. Do not hesitate to evolve a multi-stakeholder model working closely with the board and ICANN.org. Break down the silos, treat each other and staff with respect and professionalism, and ensure you work well together in protecting ICANN's future. In closing, I want to thank everyone for supporting me throughout the past nine years. My first thank you goes to the nominating committee for electing me to the board three times in a row. You gave me a chance of a lifetime. Thank you to our community for welcoming me in my early years. I joined the ICANN board as an outsider, but you embraced me, encouraged me, and willed me on to succeed every step of the way. I look forward to thanking many of you in person during this week. Thank you to ICANN org executives and staff for your unwavering loyalty and commitment. Joran, the work you and your team have done is above and beyond what my expectations were coming into the chair position. Thank you to my colleagues on the board, past and present, for your support and for giving me the opportunity to be chair. Your openness to make reforms to how we structure our work and how we engage with each other and our community made us a more trusted, transparent, and effective board. 
Thank you to Steve Crocker, my predecessor, for believing in me and for being such a wonderful mentor and friend. Finally, and most importantly to me, I want to thank my wife Geraldine and my son James, who are here with me in Montreal, and my four other children, Natalie, Rod, Odette, and Cora, who are listening remotely. So I'm told. <laughs> I did not envisage the commitment I made nine years ago to be as extensive as it has been. I appreciate the sacrifices my family made. Without your love and support, I could not, I could not have done this job that I have so much enjoyed. The past nine years have been the greatest privilege and honor of my professional life. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you all profusely. I bid you farewell and look forward to seeing what's next for ICANN. Thank you. I enjoyed this last bit quite a lot. <laughs>